Gaming Vault presents the 15 most awful video game vehicles we will never use in real life. Vehicle sections in video games are usually pretty terrible. That was the rule of thumb as recently as five years ago at least. These days driving physics are generally better, and any kind of driving or flying is a more central part of games, thanks to big open worlds. But those old terrible vehicle sections aren't going anywhere. And the problem hasn't been completely solved, as you'll see with these terrible, but great, examples. Mass Effect – Mako Let's get the obvious one out of the way first. The Mako, the vehicle that you use to explore the surface of other worlds, is one of the worst vehicles in gaming history. It controls like a drunk whale on a unicycle with a flat tire, and it's easily one of the worst vehicles in gaming history. Desert Bus – The Bus Desert Bus is some kind of torture device. You have to drive through an empty desert for hours in an empty bus, constantly holding down the gas button for nothing. You can't just tape the button down or get something to hold it down, because the bus constantly veers to the right. Somehow, the developers managed to make the most boring game of all time incredibly frustrating as well. Half-Life 2 – The Airboat the airboat in Half-Life 2 drives just like you'd expect an airboat to control. It's very floaty and hard to steer. What makes the airboat section more annoying is how you have to constantly get out and open gates, on top of having to use the boat's gun to shoot enemies ahead and beside you, making steering all the more difficult by having to aim. Gran Turismo 4 – Patent Motor Wagon 1886 and Daimler Motor Carriage 1886 these cars are terrible. They clearly aren't meant to be used in actual racing. But why are they there? They aren't fun to drive because they're so slow. The novelty wears off in less than a minute. They're ugly, and who really cares? This might sound like someone who doesn't care about history, but consider this. The time it took to model and design these cars could have been spent on putting two other, better cars in. Cars you could have actually used. Ride to Hell Retribution – The Motorcycle Ride to Hell Retribution is a terrible game, made all the worse by the motorcycle driving sections. They're incredibly linear. You can drive fully horizontal to the ground when sliding under trucks. The combat on the bikes is a terrible QTE affair. And if you get hit once, you have to start back from the beginning because there's no reversing and the sound effects are enough to drive you insane. Deadly Premonition – The Police Car the police car in Deadly Premonition feels like a driving section in a PS1 game. The car is very heavy and clunky, and the physics around it don't make much sense. You have to jam the analog stick in the direction you want to turn to steer, and if you take too much damage, you'll have to start all over again. Having to drive to get anywhere really hobbles the game's pacing as well. Big Rigs – The Trucks You can just count the whole game in this one. Big Rigs is notorious for being one of the worst games of all time. It doesn't work. It's a racing game, but the opponents just sit there at the start. None of the bridges or buildings are solid, and you constantly drive out of the game's world. And it's ugly as hell. At least it's fun to mess around with, unlike most vehicles on this list. Star Wars – Shadow of the Empire – The Swoop Bike The games based on the classic Star Wars franchise have had some pretty terrible games and most of them revolve around vehicles. The worst of the group is arguably the swoop bike sections in Shadows of the Empire on the Nintendo 64. These swoop bike races were a real pain to control, and you'd more or less speed straight into walls given how fast the bikes were and how poorly they steered. Battlefield Hardline – Police Car Battlefield Hardline is easily the worst Battlefield game, and a lot of that has to do with the police car. The police car is just a police car. It has no weapons, so it makes you a sitting target. The maps aren't very big either, making the car almost useless. Even worse, because if you drive out of the confines of the map, you're killed and have to respawn. And don't even get me started on the under-construction freeway set piece of the game. Roger Rabbit – Benny the Cab We're going way back for this one, but it deserves a spot on this list. Benny the Cab, the talking taxi in the NES adaptation of Roger Rabbit, is drunk. There's no explanation for it. He constantly drives around in circles, and you have no control over him. You can jam the D-pad any way you want, but it won't make any difference. 
it's impossible to control, and you have to just hope you'll get lucky enough for it to go where you need to go. Borderlands June Buggy The vehicles in Borderlands are terrible. This might not be a popular opinion, but it's true. You have to accelerate with the analog stick, as well as steer and look around with the stick as well. Why isn't the accelerate button on one of the triggers or face buttons? It makes for an intensely slow and frustrating experience as you're constantly driving into walls and down holes simply for trying to look around. Alone in the Dark – Taxi Why does a horror game need a mandatory driving section? In many ways, the taxi driving level is the scariest part of Alone in the Dark as it handles like a greased pig on ice. You're constantly being chased by a crack in the road that you have to dodge, but it comes up so quickly you barely have time to react. If you do dodge, you'll probably end up in one of the many other cars or fallen buildings that litter the street, forcing you to stop and back up, at which point the crack thing will probably get you anyway. Dick Tracy – Tracy's Police Car The police car in the NES adaptation of Dick Tracy doesn't work like a car at all. Instead, imagine it more as a train with set tracks. You can't really move it left or right in the street, it stays on its track unless you have to turn. But turning works like how a train would turn, if whoever invented trains didn't realise turning them at 90 degree angles didn't work. You have to stop the car at the precise moment, and hit the D-pad at the precise time and angle for the car to go where you want it, otherwise it'll keep going straight or some other direction. Battletoads – Hoverbikes Battletoads is not an easy game, and it's made all the more difficult by the hoverbike. The screen moves so fast you barely have any time to react to what's ahead of you. It's made worse by the ugly, flat, pink background that makes judging how close you are to obstacles hard to judge. Best of all, there's a slight delay on the jump button, meaning you have to hit the button before you think you need to. How anyone was supposed to complete this level back in the day is a mystery. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood – Leonardo da Vinci's Tank Hey, you know a great idea. Taking an open-world game about stealthily assassinating people in 1499 Italy and forcing the player to suddenly get into a slow, unwieldy tank. Wait, that's a terrible idea. Sadly, no one told Ubisoft that. Da Vinci's Tank is slow, hard to turn and incredibly fragile, meaning you're going to die over and over again and there's not much you can do about it. Like this video? Why not give us a like and subscribe? We try and upload amazing videos almost every single day. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.